Hello everyone and welcome to another video presentation on UI Vision RPA. As some of you may know, I started exploring UI Vision for a few months now. And so far I've been sharing my learning experiences through my online mini tutorials. I think I now have enough of an exposure to UI Vision to know its capabilities to give a personal review on the solution. So to start off, I thought it might be good if we took a step back and to get all of us on the same page as to what RPA or robotic process automation is all about. This is what my definition is of RPA and some of you may agree and some of you may disagree with it. Uh, and I'm not saying that this is the best definition of RPA. It is just what I think RPA is and it is based on this that I am reviewing UI vision. So, RPA to me is a technology that enables the automation of highly repeatable computer-related activities that have been traditionally done by human beings, with the emphasis on the words that has been capitalized here. Let's take an example of what I mean by that. So here we see a company clerk who traditionally handles all the invoices sent in by the vendors. And then he or she will have to manually take each and every one of these invoices in whatever form they come in, whether that's through an email, whether it's a physical paper bill, uh, electronic messages, uh, you know, or a PDF document or what have you. And he or she will have to manually enter those details into the accounting system used by the company. Uh, this could be software like MYOB or SAP or whatever financial systems the organization the Clark works for has chosen to use. Now, as you can imagine, this is a highly repeatable activity that is performed by a human being. Now, depending on how much business is going on, you can imagine this is a pretty time consuming and probably a little boring piece of work. The clerk would likely have a lot of other things to do as well, but this can potentially take up a lot of the time as it is sometimes not just blindly keying in the data. The clerk may have to look up certain information from other systems and perhaps do some cross validation before putting it into the, the, the organization's accounting system. You get the idea here. Now, because this is a highly repeatable activity, it can essentially be replaced by an RPA bot. The RPA bot will take over the job of collecting all of these invoices in all its various forms, do whatever cross-validation and cross-checking that it needs to do with other systems, and proceed to enter the data into the accounting system. And the idea is that by using a bot to do this, we can process a lot more invoices in a much shorter amount of time. Using a bot will also likely result in less errors because humans tend to make mistakes when transposing data. Now that we are on the same page about what RPA is about, let's see what are some of the basic must-haves for an RPA software and what would be nice to have. As a start, an RPA software will need to have the ability to read inputs from many different sources. Using the example earlier, the RPA software must be able to read the invoices. As invoices can come in many forms, they can be sent in as an email or delivered as a PDF document, or it could be a link to an online invoice on a website. So a good RPA software must be able to process inputs from various types of sources in various types of formats. With all the inputs, then the RPA software will need to be able to automate the actions. Using the example earlier, it must be able to replicate the actions of the clerk to look up other applications or other systems and read data of them so that it can be cross-checked with the data it picked up from the invoice. It must then be able to enter the data into the accounting system. So that's point number two. A good software, a good RPA software must have the ability to automate on different applications and on different platforms. The third point is the stability of the RPA software. A good RPA software must be able to run 24 by 7 and must also have the abilities to recover from errors. Now those three points, I believe, make up the must-haves for any RPA software. 
Now let us take a look at some of the nice to haves of an RPA software. First, it must be easy to automate. Some may argue that this is a need to have, but I beg to defer. Ease of automation, while is definitely an important criteria, the thing is, is it is quite a subjective matter. And chances are there are lots of technical resources available that can help with the automation. To me, an RPA software needs to first and foremost be functional, uh, but it would really be nice to have if it can be done by a business or a non-technical user. Secondly, it is about the ability to manage and control all of the bots from a central system, or what is known as orchestration. This is a nice to have in my opinion because it really depends on how much you are automating. If you are going to replace a large number of human activities with the bots, then yes, the ability to orchestrate all of your bots from a single interface is essential. But if we are starting to automate just a few business processes here and there with one bot each, then perhaps it is not as essential. But really, I'm, I am a little too minded about this, but seeing as RPA can be small scale or large, I believe it is not essential at this point, but really a nice to have. And the last point I want to make here is the cost. How much does the RPA software cost? Because if I'm replacing my workforce with it, I am looking to save some money in the process. If the cost of the software is too much or exorbitant, uh, and not to forget, I still need to pay people to automate it, it might not be worth it. It is important to look not just at the cost savings of reducing the number of people on the job, but also on the benefits of less errors and risk that you can attain from jumping into RPA. So now that we've seen what an RPA software needs to be, let's see how UI Vision RPA stacks up. And we will start by exploring how well UI Vision handles input formats and types. Well, in this regard, UI Vision can certainly handle web pages. So if your inputs are from a website or a system that is accessible from a web browser, UI Vision should have no issues with that. UI Vision can also read Excel files, so it is best if it's one Excel file with each row representing one input because then UI Vision will have the ability to read every row and process it one at a time. I have a mini tutorial on this already and that you can check it out. Lastly, uh, UI Vision can also read PDF files and it uses optical character recognition technology or OCR technology to read words and information off the PDF file. Now, my experience with this personally hasn't been so great though. Um, I've had issues with scrolling the PDF document if it doesn't fit into the screen uh, and so on and so forth, but technically it can be done by UI Vision. Secondly, how capable is UI Vision in terms of automating actions on applications? Actions that it needs to do are things like starting and accessing the relevant applications, navigating the screens, reading information off the fields in the application, entering data into them, clicking buttons and menu items, and just essentially the actions a human being would take when interacting with the application. Well, if your application is a web-based application, that means you access it via a web browser like Edge, Chrome, or Firefox, I can say that UI Vision does that pretty well. But if your application is a native Windows or macOS or Linux-based application, UI Vision uses what they call the Vision Approach, which means relying on its image and optical character recognition to find the application or the field on the screen, and then automating actions on them using that. Now, it works quite well, actually, um, but there are two drawbacks that I have encountered here. The first drawback is that it is quite slow, as every image has to be sent to an online image processing server, and that means every step could potentially take a few seconds to complete. Now, if you have a lot of steps, putting all those together, which may mean that you know the speed that you get from RPA uh, is diminished. The second drawback is that it can be a hit and miss from a robustness point of view. This is especially true if the application you are automating does not behave in a consistent way. 
although these issues can be solved largely by using workarounds, uh, it would really be nice if you know UI Vision had native support for some of the more popular applications like SAP or you know Windows-based applications. On the point of ease of automation, I've seen some other RPA solutions before, and honestly, UI Vision is not so easy to automate. You pretty much need to know Selenium, JavaScript, and to do some really, se really serious stuff, you, you probably need to know another map programming language like Python or Java so that you can write programs that UI Vision can then use to do some of the more complicated things. On the point of cost, this is where UI Vision shines. Uh, it is not cheap, but it is cheaper, I believe, than the other mainstream RPA solutions out there. I like that there is an unlimited time trial, meaning you can use it for free forever, but you are just going to be limited to a small number of image and OCR recognitions that you can do every day. I think uh, as when I was testing this, I think there is a hundred, uh, maximum number of hundred uh, OCR and image recognitions you can run every day. Now there are also other limitations like the maximum number of scripts you can have at any one time with the free version. And that means if you are really looking to make this your RPA tool uh, for your business, you will likely need to pay. And that is fair. So before we end the session today, here's a quick take on how UI Vision stacks up as an RPA tool. It is good when it comes to input support as it can read the most common formats like a web page, like Excel and PDF files. Um, in terms of automating actions, it is not so great as it can really do web pages well, but for everything else, it relies on the vision approach. Uh, and that means using OCR or image recognition. Uh, this is a little slow today, and it can be tricky if your application does not behave consistently. Um, platform support is good as it covers the all the major operating systems, uh, probably one of the only ones that does this. Uh, and in terms of robustness, it seems good when automating actions on web applications, but honestly, I haven't really tested the vision approach that much. Uh, it is certainly not a tool for business users, uh, but that isn't so bad because Selenium, JavaScript, Python, or Java are very popular technologies that you can easily find help for. I marked it down here because it simply isn't easy to automate if you are a non-technical uh, user and you want to do it yourself. Uh, in terms of uh, orchestration, there is no orchestration, but the licensing cost uh, is much cheaper when compared to some of the other more mainstream RPA tools out there. And so there you go. This is my personal review of the UI Vision RPA software after playing with it for some months, uh, and I hope uh, it has been useful. As usual, I would like to hear from you what you think and your feedback is really important for me. Be sure to discuss this in the discussion panel below the video and as usual, be sure to like this video if you like it and subscribe to my channel for more geeky and tacky videos in the future. If there's something you'd like to see, also feel free to post it in the discussion panel below and I will see what I can do. Uh, till the next time, have a great day wherever you are, stay cool, stay safe and goodbye.